Wow, what an amazing day, night, whatever time you're watching this message. I just want to tell you, you are amazing. You're extraordinary. I know maybe you don't feel it right now, but you are. I want you to believe it. So a lot of times we're not recognized or even noticed, right? How many of you of y'all can say, you know, they didn't even notice the work I did or they didn't even notice, you know, what I've done or we have to remember to recognize the little things that people do. And so today I'm telling you, you are amazing. You're extraordinary. We're grateful for all this, the production team that's here today. Yay. Yes, because they make it happen. They make it happen so that you can see these messages. The picture looks clear. We sound good. We look good, right? It, it, they make everything look so perfect. I always tell them, make sure you take the chin here off. And I'm just playing, guys. Let's, let's get ready. Let's get started. Remember, you don't lose. You always win. You are a winner. You are more than a conqueror. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I see that you're going to be above and beyond. This is not a Buzz Lightyear statement, but above and beyond. You are the head and not the tail. Believe that. Receive that. My husband, my our, myself, City Church International family, we are believing this for you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So let's start. So the title, if you have your pen paper ready, your tablets, your laptop, whatever you're using as note taking, um, we have note taking app or whatever. The title for this message is called Overcome. Overcome. And we're going to dive into the scripture in John 16, 33 in the NIV. And it goes into and it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace so pay attention this is jesus red letters i have told you these things so that you in me you may have peace in this world you're gonna have trouble he's already warning us we're gonna have trouble so those of you that think life has to be perfect the perfect husband perfect wife nice car nice job six digit job it is not perfect. Please get that through your understanding because you're really going to be depressed and upset and always frustrated when you think that it is not perfect. Please get this through your understanding. He's saying, in the world you will have trouble, but take heart. Why? He's telling us, you know why? Because he overcame the world. I have overcome the world. I'm not minimalizing, that's not a word, guys. I'm not, bring, I'm not, bring, I'm not saying that your suicidal thoughts, um, self-destruction, rejection, unworthiness, fear, worry, anxiety, I'm not saying it's not real. It is real. Those are real demons. Those are spirits that literally like to attack people. Not just church people. I'm talking about people in general. I mean, walk down the street to to downtown of the downtown area of your city and notice that there's homeless people. Guess what they struggle with? Unworthiness, depression, oppression, heaviness. It's not just you with the six digits. It's not just you as a housewife. It's not just you as a child. No. The enemy, these things, they're strong demons, strongholds that try to overtake the world and overtake people by, by making them feel this way. And it makes them, people that struggle with, things, with these things either feel isolated, separated, maybe alone. Maybe there's, they feel hopeless, right? And everything around them, their world is falling apart, it makes them feel that way. Satan uses that. He uses fear, worry, anxiety, depression to steal a person's spiritual power and freedom. I've said it in the past messages. God has given you the power, power to change, right? But at the same time, we, we need to go in and exercise what God has given us. So the enemy attacks us, and he's no respecter of anybody. You can be a pastor, preacher, pope, anybody. He attacks everyone according to if we give him that. What does it say that? If we give him an inch, he's going to take the whole, whole thing, right? So don't give him that room. Don't give him that crack to come in and bring you down. We can't. 
He, he, will, he will seek you till he fills your mind up with darkness, heaviness, deception, poverty, self-hate. And when he does, he can really bring you down emotionally. But let's dive back into the scripture, the word of God. Let's get out of the dark and let's get into the light of God's word. And so it says, John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. So he's already telling you peace is right there. It's your choice. You either activate, you apply the God, word of God, the peace of God over your life, because now it goes on to say, in this world, okay, we're here. I'm physically touching myself. I'm in this world. You're listening to this message. It says, in this world, you're going to have trouble, but take heart, because it says, he went on to tell us, I have overcome the world. He's overcome the world. So that tells me that we have the power to overcome. God does not give us a, a spirit of fear. There's a scripture that says that. Doesn't give us a, a spirit of fear. He doesn't give us worry and anxiety and depression. The scripture says he gives us peace. Yes, we're going to experience trouble, but he already overcame. Right, Dorothy? An important part of battling the enemy's junk is winning the war over our feelings and winning the war, war over our mind, winning the war over the way we're thinking. Notice the messages are always talking about the way we think, the words we say, because that's the only tactic the enemy has. If he can get your mind to think a certain way, he will get your mouth to say a certain thing, and then what you're saying eventually is going to be, uh, your, it's your prophesying is going to come into existence in your lives. So that's the only tactics he has. So let's learn, let's expose the enemy, and let's win this battle. Let's win this battle. If, if you become completely absorbed over your circumstances or over your problem or problems, if you become immune to those circumstances, the devil will destroy us emotionally and mentally. So we have to stop living, living in our, in our worry habits, right? A lot of us are, we, we have habits of worrying all the time. We worry about our kids. We worry about our mom. We're worried about our husband. We're worried they didn't even get sleep at night. I mean, we worry about the littlest things. We worry... We, we need to stop living in our anxieties. What makes us scared? What makes us nervous? Um, we got to stop living in our depression because it can really kill you. And Satan is a master of getting us to worry about stuff that never is going to happen. I said it in the last message. We're worried about a doctor's report. We waste a whole week making our body sick. For what? He, we just took a day or two. So say God wanted you to live to be 100 now you're going to live to be 89. I mean, 90, 98. Sorry, dyslexic. But now we're going to live 98 days because we worried for a whole week when the doctor's note was like, oh, you're good. Let's just give you this, that, and you'll be fine in a few weeks. We worry about those things. So he, Satan is a master of getting you to worry about stuff that's never going to happen causing us to have heart issues, right? Causing our cancer cells to grow. Did you know that every time we have a, 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 an anger episode that we restrict our blood vessels and we make ourselves more sick? Do we know that? We don't know that. When you get angry and you're in the highway and you're, you're, you get upset because someone flicks you off or you get a phone call that you, got, you get bad news and you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And when you're doing that, you're restricting every part of your body inside, affecting the blood flow to your kidneys, affecting the blood flow to your heart, affecting. So guess what? Now you are going to live 100, but because you've done that for 10 years, now you're going to be dying at 80 because you're taking all those years because you decide to live that way. Okay? So we, we got to be careful. We cause cancer cells to affect our bodies, uh, blood vessels, and we wonder why we have blood High blood pressure. High blood pressure is a silent killer. Nobody knows they have it until their heart, part of their heart, percentage of their heart just gives up and you have a heart attack. Oh, it's a mild heart attack. Oh, I'm going to eat right from now on, but you still keep on with your same personality, your same attitude. It doesn't matter if you're eating right. Change your personality. Change your attitude. Because the more angry you are, the sicker you're going to get. We got, to, we got to think about those things, but that's how the devil lies to us, and he makes us sick physically. He Either he's going to get us through our thinking, he's going to get us through our words, or he's going to make us kill our own self by responding negative, having that nasty attitude, hating on people, talking about people, gossiping about people, things like that. 
then we wonder why we have the heart attack. That's what the enemy wants. He wants us weak. He wants your mind weak. He wants your heart weak. He wants you feeble. He doesn't, he wants to kill you. The scripture says that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his whole, that's his whole plan. So we got to stop embracing the devil's toxic habits. God doesn't want you to live in chronic fear, chronic worry, chronic anxiety, chronic depression. I mean, don't you just get tired of waking up like that? Can't, don't you just want to wake up one day and just feel like, man, I mean, I've woken up some days where I'm like, wow, you know, this is really, it feels really good to be peaceful. It makes me feel good. You, you got to do that. Today, I come to tell you that God did not create you to carry the world's troubles. He did not create you to carry your kids' troubles. He did not create you to carry your brother's troubles or the junk in your hearts. So today you have to make that choice to say, I've had enough of the devil's games, devil's suggestions, and his whispers. I'm tired. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that antidote you're talking about. What's that antidote I'm talking about? It's called the word of God. It's called Jesus Christ. That's the antidote. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And the word is powerful. That's the antidote. That's the antidote to the junk we deal with every day. The word of God is a weapon that gives you supernatural power to defeat whatever you're dealing for, with. And you have to release the power of God into every negative situation. I know we're in the middle of the heat of it and we just want to just tell it like it is, cuss them out, make sure they understand, and make sure everybody in that room hears how angry you are. But we got to stop, breathe, think, and bring God's word into that negative situation. You have to decide that you're not the devil's puppet. You, are, you have to decide that you will overcome the darkness of hell that tries to overtake you, your life, your household, your family. And when trouble comes and when tough times hit your life, you have to refuse to be controlled by fear. You have to. With God's perfect peace activated inside of us, there's nothing, Dorothy, that can move us nor shake us. God's activated power inside of you. If you take anything today, God's activated perfect peace, activated power inside of us. If it's inside of us, alive, active, living, applying, there's nothing that will move you or can shake you. Amen. So I want you to take that this week. God, Jesus said, I overcame the world. He also said you would have problems. I'm going to have problems. You're going to have problems. We're all going to have problems. So let's, let's get that fairy tale mentality out of your head because nothing's perfect. No one's perfect. We're all imperfect working to be perfect or be as perfect as we can because there's nobody perfect but Jesus, right? But take that with you. I want you to apply it. When, it, when something comes up, instead of blowing up, blowing up and getting upset, stop, breathe, and think about God's perfect peace. Just say, God, I need you to seal my lips. I need you to get this perception that's so nasty in my mind right now because I'm about to rip one. I want to just tell them this, 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 this. And you're already rehearsing your mind what you're going to say because you want them to hear who's boss and that's it. We got to get to that point when we say, God, oh my God, peace right now. Seal my lips. Give me your peace because you give us that power to overcome. Amen. All right. So right there where you're at, let's pray. Let's pray. Um, actually, yeah, let's pray right there where you're at. I want to share one more scripture. Hold on. One more scripture. Hebrews 4.12. It says that God's word is alive and powerful. If you want to write that one down, his word is alive and powerful. You got to fill yourselves with God. You got to begin to develop your confidence. Begin to develop your boldness and, and develop your faith. That's the biggest thing, right? Developing our faith. We cannot control our circumstances, Dorothy, but we can control what happens for in the future. Amen. So let's pray right now, right there where you're at. Father God, we love you. We need you. We have to have you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. New week, new you. Be empowered. Stay engaged. Stay connected. Love God. Love people. Serve others and change the world. We want to thank every generous giver right there where you're at. Your instructions are on the screen there. We love you. 
We are grateful that you are part of City Church International. And as my husband and I and the City Church family pray, we speak increase into your lives. Psalm 6511 right now. Let God's hand show off in your lives today as you give. And let people know that it is all God's doing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.